welcome my time travelling friends to this month's A to Z of Tudor Places with me, the Tudor Travel Guide. Hi, my name's Sarah and in these guides my aim is to bring you the stories of locations across the UK that are imbued with significant Tudor history. Now, this month we're on the letter Q and that has been a tricky one for sure. There are not too many places that fit the brief, which in some ways made it quite easy to narrow down this month's A to Z to one obvious location, Queenborough Castle on the Isle of Sheppey. Normally in these A to Zs, I focus on a place where there is something significant to see. Sadly though, this is not the case with this month's location because all that remains are earthworks in the ground. However, do not be discouraged, for if you are a fan of Anne Boleyn in particular and you love following in her footsteps, then the Isle of Sheppey is an interesting place to visit. Today it is about as far off the usual Tudor Trail as you are likely to get, but both the island and the castle were visited by Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn on their historic trip to Calais in 1532. Anne was, of course, reaching the zenith of her power and a friend and supporter of the Boleyns, Sir Thomas Cheney, played host to the couple when they visited Sheppey. So, I figured if it was good enough for Anne and Henry, it certainly qualifies to be included in this A to Z. Well, in fact, I've got to admit, friends, I'm cheating a little because while we will touch on the story of Queenber and its castle, I want to use this location to draw your attention to another wonderful Tudor location that lies nearby. Well, more on that location to come in a moment. Now, the Isle of Sheppey sits adjacent to the North Kentish coast, and today it's reached by driving over the impressive Sheppey Crossing. But of course, Anne and Henry sailed across the water, arriving on the island on the 6th of October 1532. As I have mentioned, they were to be guests of Sir Thomas Cheney, a distant cousin of Anne's through her father's side of the family. He was a knight of the garter and treasurer of the royal household under Henry VIII. His principal country seat was the magnificent and recently refurbished Sherland Hall on the Isle of Sheppey. Thomas Cheney was a steadfast and loyal servant of the King's and as a friend of Anne and the Boleyns no doubt fully supported Henry's plans for a forthcoming royal marriage. He was clearly being honoured for this unreserved support for the royal couple had scheduled a full four days on the island, lodging at Sherland Hall as Sir Thomas's honoured guests. When King Henry and his Queen-in-waiting arrived at Sheppey, they were greeted with pomp and ceremony at Queenborough Castle, of which Sir Thomas was the constable. Queenborough had been built by King Edward the in the 14th century as a defensive fortress overlooking the point at which two rivers, the Swale and the Medway, converge at the mouth of the Thames estuary. So this was a strategically important site. In fact, the castle, Queenborough, was named after Edward's queen consort, Philippa of Hainault, and was unusual on two counts. First, it was the last defensive medieval castle to be built in England during the later Middle Ages and secondly, it was built in an unusual concentric design. A round central tower embraced a small courtyard which had a 260 foot well at its centre. Around this central building was a round outer courtyard which was in turn surrounded by a wall and then a circular moat. We know that because a plan of it survives in the Hatfield archives, allowing us to visualise how it once looked. The castle went on to survive into the 1600s, but it was finally deemed uninhabitable 
and eventually fell into decay. But now let's go back to our royal visit. Because when the ceremony of greeting was over at Queenborough, the royal party proceeded to the shiny new and far more fashionable and comfortable Sherland Hall. Sherland was described at the time as a stately residence. It had a private chapel, stables, mews, kennels, offices and gardens, and probably much more. A contemporary plan, which is held today in the National Archives at Kew, shows it as an extensive red brick property, consisting of several large courtyards, some surrounded by walls, others offices and residential buildings. It certainly would have been reminiscent of any great Tudor palace such as Hampton Court. As I've mentioned, the royal couple spent four days as Sir Thomas's guest, eating, drinking, hunting. The 36 square miles that make up the Isle of Sheppey was, at the time, largely covered in woodland and therefore was ideal hunting land. The royal visit to Sherland was surely the pinnacle of its otherwise quiet history though, because it was not too short order, abandoned by Thomas's son, Henry Cheney, was then sequestered by the Crown in 1570 before it was granted to the Herbert family. But over time, it became little more than a farmhouse. But in the 1990s, efforts began to preserve what was left of the buildings. This included a fabulous gatehouse range and part of the Great Hall. And then in 2006, a grant of 300,000 sterling pounds was given to restore the facade of the hall and the aforementioned gatehouse. All this work was completed in 2010, 11, and then the hall went up for sale for two million pounds. And it is now privately owned. If you want to visit Sheppey, well, it's almost like descending upon another country as you drive over the Sheppey Crossing, which is a sweeping bridge that ascends to 115 feet before depositing you on the island, which feels a little remote and sometimes the wind swept. But the island is small, so if you have a car, it's easy to get around. In Queenborough itself, which is a small town on the island of Sheppey, there is nothing left of the castle whose site, believe me, can be tricky to locate. I do not expect any signs pointing the way. But the castle was originally positioned where there's now an open green area and playing field next to Queenborough Railway Station. There is an adjacent car park and, thankfully, a commemorative plaque gives some information about the site of the castle and how it once looked. If you want to visit Sherland Hall, well that's some 10 or 15 minutes drive away from Queenborough, with the hall lying positioned on the edge of a small village called East Church. And as I've mentioned before, it is currently in private ownership, so not open to public viewing. When I last visited the Isle of Sheppey, which was some um, five or six years ago, the red brick Tudor gatehouse was clearly visible at a distance, about a quarter of a mile down a long drive and surrounded by open fields. But let me stress, again, this is private property. So unless you manage to gain an invite from the owners, you can't visit the hall itself, sadly. Finally, though, if you do make the trip to explore Sheppey, and I salute you as a real connoisseur of Tudor history. If you do, make sure you visit the Minster, which is a small church, an old Saxon abbey church, in fact, which sits proudly atop the highest hilltop position in Sheppey. And this is where the owner of Sherland Hall at the time of Anne and Henry's visit, Sir Thomas Cheney, is buried in the church, the former Minster Abbey, in a tomb which has really been greatly ravaged by time. Well, my friends, that's all for this month's A to Z. I hope you enjoyed our Whistletops tour of a rather unusual Tudor location. And as I say, not visited by many. 
So if you really are dedicated to following in the footsteps of Anne Boleyn, then maybe if you visit Sheppey, this is one that you can chalk up on your itinerary and brag about to your Tudor loving friends. Okay, well, that's all for me for this month. Of course, do make sure that if you're not already, you subscribe to this channel if you have enjoyed the video and make sure you hit that little alert bell so you know whenever I release a new film. Until next month, my friends, when we tackle the letter R, it's, of course, happy time travelling. <laughs>